decades ago, an unknown serial killer was on the loose, hunting young girls who were alone. 50 years later, the freeway phantom could still be out there. We're taking a look at the case on DBL's True Crime Chronicles. It was 1971. Something gruesome and unexplainable was happening in Washington, D.C. and surrounding areas. Young girls were disappearing. Most of these girls were running errands for their parents, innocently playing outside, innocently walking to the store, and they're just gone. Victoria and her father wrote a book about this notorious serial killer, dubbed The Freeway Phantom. It all started April 21st, 1971, when 13-year-old Carol Spanks left her home to buy groceries. Six days later, police found her body dumped along a major highway. She had been abducted, sexually assaulted, and strangled. Her twin sister still tries to keep her spirit alive. Basically, I just say that, um, I hope she's okay. I'm sure she is. Three months later, 16-year-old Darlenia Johnson was on her way to work when she was abducted, assaulted, and found dead on the side of a road. A few weeks later, the crime moved northwest. 10-year-old Brenda Crockett was found dead after going to a grocery store. Fast forward to October. 12-year-old Nenomashia Yates was walking home from a Safeway when she was abducted and murdered. In November, 18-year-old Brenda Woodward vanishes at a bus stop. Police later find her body and a note in her pocket reading, this is tantamount to my insensitivity to people, especially women. I will admit the others when you catch me, if you can. Then, a year of silence until September 1972. 17-year-old Diane Williams is found dead after boarding a bus. All six women disappeared and were found in similar fashions. The authors of Tantamount are convinced this case can still be solved. He kept textbooks from one of the girls. He kept hair curlers from another girl. He kept shoelaces from another girl. Some family member may stumble across those things and say, why did he keep this junk? Blaine and his daughter believe there are a handful of suspects, but one that sticks out, Robert Askins. Robert Askins spent time here in St. Elizabeth's. He had a problem with women that went back to the 1930s. He tried to kill women and successfully killed women. Earlier, Eric and I spoke with a reporter who's worked very closely on this case. Take a look. We're joined by reporter Bruce Lashan from WUSA in Washington, D.C. Thank you so much for joining us. Robert Askins was considered a suspect. Who was he and why was he just never charged? Well, I mean, he was insane. I mean, it was he, he literally and, and institutionalized for long periods of his life. He was a guy who was a self-described woman hater uh, and just had repeated situations in which he attacked women. Uh, going back to 1938, if you can imagine that, uh, he actually went to a brothel and slipped cyanide into drinks and gave them to five prostitutes in this brothel. One of them died. He was charged with that crime, ended up uh, in St. Elizabeth's uh, Hospital, a mental institution for some period of time, uh, got out, allegedly attacked another woman uh, and somehow got off on that. And they noticed uh, in some of the stuff that he uh, that they found uh, in his house, the word tantamount in, mm. in some of his writings. And tantamount was found on a note that was left on one of the freeway phantom victims. Wow. So that's how in some ways, because of the nature of the crimes that he was accused of prior to this, he became a suspect in the freeway phantom murders. This is absolutely horrifying. And it's been 50 years. And you spoke with some of the victims' families. How are they coping today? You know, they are shaken. Uh, and it had a lifelong impact on a lot of them. One sister says that she 
still talks to her dead sister every day and still hopes someday uh, to give her uh, some answers. Uh, earlier, we heard from the authors of the new book about this. Any new leads developed from it at all, Bruce? Well, the key thing in the book really is this St. Elizabeth's Hospital. Mm. Uh, and they uh, relied on some FBI techniques. And the sense was that St. Elizabeth's Hospital was really the center point of all six, where all six of these uh, murders took place, where the bodies were dumped uh, along on the freeways. Um, there's also a sense really that somebody out there may have something um, that may solve this still. I mean, I think that's the thing that's so outrageous here. Here you have six African-American girls who were raped, murdered, dumped on the side of the road, and yet we don't know who did it after half a century. I mean, it's just so infuriating uh, that we can't have answers in that. Amen. Thank you for staying with it. Seriously, thank you, Bruce. For the latest on this case and to learn more, visit WUSA9.com. You can also listen to a new podcast episode, The Freeway Phantom. Just search True Crime Chronicles on your favorite podcast player. The only way we'll get more answers is if we keep this case public. Thank you again, Bruce.